Hey guys, got a real good one here for you today. This is a 2002 Dodge Caravan, and what we're dealing with is a transmission that does not upshift or downshift. It's basically a second gear lockout. This is also known as limp home mode for these transmissions. We have a trouble code in memory of a PO888, which is transmission relay output always off. So this is the code we're going to attack on this vehicle. And I think what you guys are going to find here is some very valuable lessons on wiring tests, relay tests. So I think main focus really for this video would be reinforcement of how to test a computer controlled relay. Okay, one of the things I always tell my students is to arm yourself. Get as much information as you can. We have a trouble code, so let's pull the flow chart next. This is it, it's a DTC P0888. And the reason that we use this flow chart is a guide to what our possible causes are, which is very nice. You can see that right here listed. And you'll have to forgive the camera work here today, guys. I am in the field. I do not have my tripod, but bear with me. And so we have wiring issues, low battery voltage, battery positive, open ground, Transmission control relay output short to ground open transmission control relay circuit defective relay malfunctioning TCM So that's kind of nice to know what your possibilities are And so think about this guys. It's a relay circuit it's computer controlled, you know, the best thing for us to do is Not follow this flow chart and do it ourselves because we've learned techniques. We've learned methods to check relays Let's get a diagram and check it. I think it's pretty neat though Within this flowchart, they're actually telling you to use a test light and compare brightness of the test light connected directly to battery during the following steps. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that tells me that these are probably known for wiring problems, the fact that we're comparing the brightness of a test light. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I think it's pretty neat to see a manufacturer flowchart telling you to use a test light. So um, next thing, we're going to look at the wiring diagram. All right, looking at the diagram, you see our transmission relay up here. Our transmission computer is over here. And looking at this, what we can see is our control side, our coil, our load side, which is our switch. And what we see right away is the control side coil has a ground. And that means that this is power side switched on this side. Just looking at this part of the circuit right here, not any further. I know that this relay is power side switched. We follow this wire and we find that that wire goes to the transmission computer and it says trans relay control. This yellow green, sorry, yellow brown wire on pin 15. So the computer's gonna switch power, turn the relay on, closes the switch. So we have battery voltage comes from this fuse over this way, feeds down, this is the load side now of the relay, comes down this way feeds back to the engine computer. That's kind of our sensing circuit. There's two wires. Computer's gonna monitor the voltage here. Probably gonna use that voltage for other circuitry too. But there is a sensing circuit in here. That's where our trouble code's coming from. And this splice right here runs down to our transmission solenoid. So let me scroll down here and show that to you. So follow this wire right where that little hand is. And you can see that that wire powers up all of the solenoids that are in the transmission. So that would make sense that with this code, if there's no power on this wire, that we would be in a second gear limp home mode on this transmission. So what we're gonna do is run up to the relay and do some relay checks. I've said this in other videos when it comes to checking relays, really there's some things we can do right away. We could have done this before we pulled the diagram. In fact, I did initially. Pull the relay out. The reason we would pull it out is it is, it is in a power distribution box and I can't get to the pins underneath. If I could get to them underneath, I wouldn't unplug the relay first, just on principle. But in this case, we'll pull the relay out and what we want to see is two power. So this one, we turn the key on. Actually, that says hot all the time. So this pin should be hot all the time. And then this controlled circuit, that should be hot as soon as I turn the key on, we should get power that comes up to that. Or when I start the car 
And so that's going to be our starting point. Let's see what we have on this control wire here. Let's see what we have on this load wire here. Under the hood now, on the power distribution box, I got the cover off already. Nice of Chrysler to tell us what's what in this box. Ford, take note here, please. <laughs> Ford likes to put numbers on their stuff, but not tell us what's in there. And I don't know about their newer vehicles, but you know, what a huge time saver this is to have a location of where this is. I mean, thank you, Chrysler. GM does it too. Ford, I don't know why they put numbers. So, I don't know. Anyway, what we're looking for is our automatic transmission relay. That's this one here. That's our ETAX safety shutdown relay. That's electronic automatic transaxle. That's what it stands for. And uh, that puts us right here on this distribution box. So, very nice time saver. We're going to pull this relay out, look for our two power feeds. One should be hot all the time, and the second one should be hot when I turn the key on or when I crank it. So pulling the relay out, I have my test light already connected to ground. Always want to check our light, make sure it lights. That checks our test light connection. Come back over here to my four pins. I do not want to stuff this test light into there. I see people do that all the time. I know some people have commented on some of my videos that I do that. I don't, guys. I do not put this in those terminals. What you'll do is you'll spread the female terminals, and then the relay pins will not contact anymore. You'll have contact problems. So be careful what you're doing. Just resting this on the four pins, looking for voltage. There's one that's hot right now. So that's bottom, bottom left. And these other ones, I got nothing. So what I need to do now is I need to cycle the key or turn the key on, maybe even run the van. I should have power on another one, but here's the thing, guys. What you need to know about this, with the relay out, the computer monitors the voltage on the load side of this relay, and if it doesn't like what it sees, it shuts the relay off. And the reason it does that is it forces it into a limp home mode and that protects the transmission. Imagine a shift solenoid with low voltage going to it and the computer not knowing it and still controlling the solenoids and having uh, clutches slip and, and, and things like that. It would be a bad thing. So it's, it's a safety measure. And so when I'm checking these other pins for power, I have to cycle the key on and off. I can't just have the engine running because with the relay removed, I promise you, even if the computer power feed is here and it's good, with the relay out, the computer will shut it down. So what I need to do for these next three pins is cycle the key on and off and look for a power feed. And to do that, I'm gonna have to rig up my test light here a little bit. I only have two hands. And again, I don't wanna stuff this in there. All right, here's what I can do. Some of this is difficult looking through a two inch camera screen and then I move the camera out of the way and I realize I can see a lot better. But if you look at these pins, there's actually a tab here that that pin contacts. I have no problem putting my light in there. I don't want to put it where the pins of the relay go, but next to it, not a problem. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually push that into that side terminal and that's not going to be an issue at all. And I'm going to come back here and I'm not sure which pins which, but we're going to cycle the key, check all three of them. Keys off, keys back on, keys off, keys on, crank it. All right, we got nothing on that pin, okay? And just to show you again that battery positive pin to show you that this method will work where I'm located. So you see where I'm putting my test light. Not in where the pins of the relay are, but next to it. That's that hot feed. And you guys can see that it stays there and makes contact. All right, the next two. This is the bottom right. And again, the reason I'm cycling the key, remember the computer will shut this circuit off if it doesn't like what it sees. So we need to kind of manipulate the circuit a little. There's key on, key off. Got no power there. We got one more. Last one, 
Rocky is off. Keys on, off, on, crank it. Got no power on that last pin. So what's wrong with this circuit for sure? No question about it. The computer is not turning on this relay for this circuit. We gotta figure out why now. Okay, next thing we can do before we jump onto the computer and start doing some checks as to why this isn't being turned on is we can energize the relay with a test light and be the computer and do what the computer would do with this relay. Now the thing about that is we would need the relay kind of half installed to do it. Although there are some tools that they sell, which I need to get a set. I need to talk to my friends over at AES Wave. They sell a set of relay adapters. So what it would be is you plug the relay into an adapter and then you plug the adapter into here and what that adapter would have is it would have pins that come out of the side of it and you'd be able to uh, connect your test light or your test equipment to that like basically checking the relay within the circuit very nice tool i need to have that but what i'm going to do for this i'm going to leave the relay out just a little bit and remember this relay needs battery positive on the control side to make it turn on and so what I want to do now is I'm going to switch my test light to battery positive. Of course, check my test light, make sure it lights. And what I want to do is find my control pin. I've already done that, but I'm going to touch it on and off. You hear the relay click. And the test light is actually dim because we are dropping some of the voltage through the coil into ground. But the fact that it clicks tells me the ground is good, tells me the control of the relay can work, and that we're missing it at that location. And what we could do now is we could do some voltage checks down at the engine computer with the relay both jumped like this, and then we can check those load side inputs, and then we'll also check the control to this relay while we're down there. So that's where we're going. And again, in this procedure right here, we are being the computer, energizing the relay, checking the relay to make sure that it actually functions or clicks. In the last segment, I went through some relay checks up here, guys, and, and what I did is took my test light to battery positive on this pin, and I was talking about you know testing the relay up top, and really, that was only part of what I was trying to accomplish in doing that test. When I am doing that, what I want to do is come down here to the computer and check these two load side pins, which are sensing circuits, again, that go down to the solenoids too. And I wanna check for power here. And the reason I wanna do that is if I don't have the right voltage on this circuit, or if there's a voltage drop, the computer will shut this relay circuit off. So we'll lose power to the control side here. Now, if that was the case though, we should have had at least a momentary power here when we cycle the key and then when we run the car, it would shut it off because it doesn't like the voltage it's seeing here. So I don't think I'm gonna have a drop here, but the way I'm gonna check it is I'm gonna energize the relay with my test light up here and I'm gonna come down here to the computer to these two load side sensing circuits and I'm gonna check for battery voltage here. So that was the main reason I was doing that test up there and I'm not sure I was making that clear in that last segment. It wasn't so much that the relay clicks and all that, I mean, whatever, but main purpose, I wanna check this load side into my computer right here with this control side energized. Okay, test light's still connected to battery positive. I have the relay pulled up just a little bit and I'm gonna re-energize this relay. And I'm just laying, letting it sit there. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go down to my engine computer, not engine computer, sorry, transmission computer, and see what kind of voltage reading we have. I have my meter already hooked up to ground. I'm using a jumper wire as an extension because my leads aren't long enough. And what we want to do here too, before we go underneath, I'm almost forgetting, is we want to make sure that our meter has a good ground. So that jumper wire is connected to a cruddy battery cable. 
and I want to make sure when I just checking battery positive here make sure my meter reads 12 volts and it does and so now whatever reading I get down below I can rely on it it's something you guys want to get in the habit of doing for sure doing this kind of work where this computer's at I'm actually working outside so this is a little bit difficult this computer sits in the wheel well area and uh, let me get my camera light on use that as a guide and um, it's gonna be tough to do this shot but uh, it's a 60 pin computer so I've done some other homework too already and the homework that I've done is I've eyeballed the numbers on here and uh, so it goes 1 through 20, 21 through 40, and then 41 through 60. Now I had a good question from one of you guys, actually I think it was last night, and uh, you were asking me, you know, when, when doing computer pins, how do you know what pin to go to? And one of the things that I do, of course, is, you know, if I can find numbers, to use the numbers and, and maybe count backwards. So in this case, you know, we can start up top at pin 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, and 15. 15 is the control circuit for the relay. 16 and 17 are the load side feed wires or sensing wire. So 16 and 17 is where I want to go. And what I do guys, when I'm looking for a particular wire, I look at sequencing, not just the wire itself, but I'll look at what's next to it. Now I don't have the sequencing in front of me, but by sequencing, I'm saying in this particular circumstance, like pin 18 you can see is empty, and 17 is here, 16 is here. So we look at colors in a sequence to find the right pins, and I don't know if that's helpful or not, but look at wire sequencing, it definitely helps. So that right there would be, that's pin 16, that's one of the load sides of that relay. That is a sensing circuit. Take you down here and let you see. There we go, we got 12 volts on that wire and what I'll do now is I'm gonna take my test light off up here to de-energize the circuit. And when I do that, I'm gonna take you down to the meter to show you that we're gonna lose this voltage down here. So. Keep your focus down here, and we'll take my test light off, test light on, test light off, test light on. So you can see that that's a real good test for the load side, or really the function of that relay. There is nothing wrong with this relay circuit. The load side's good. The sensing circuit down to the computer is good. Let's make sure that pin 17 has the same voltage that we're not losing voltage on that and that's going to be one pin up and we should have 12 on that one too and you can see that we do and same thing this is relay load side circuit and there's the relay being turned on and off by me with the test light all right, now what we want to do is remember we didn't have any voltage up here on the control side. So this pin that I'm on right here with this test light, we had no control side voltage and I actually now know which of the four pins is the control. We didn't know going into it if it was this one, this one, or this one. Remember when we were doing our checks here. Um, we now know that this top left pin is the control power feed we know that because that's the circuit that energized the relay. And we weren't getting power there. So what we wanna do is we wanna check our voltage at the computer that feeds that pin. And that pin is pin 15. I'm sorry, I don't know wire colors right now and I don't wanna jump back to the diagram here. I know it's this one. I've gone through this already. Forgive me for the lack of telling you colors here. It's yellow with something. This is pin 15, and that is the relay control wire at the computer. 
that we had zero volts up at the relay. We wanna check it here and see what we have. The result of this will tell us direction. Some of these camera shots are difficult. Get you a shot of where I'm at. Just kind of laying on the door here and we get glare and anyway. All right, so the key is off right now. Turn the key on. There's an 11.3 volt turn on signal. So is the computer turning this relay on? It is guys. So what is the issue? We have no voltage here on that pin, but we have voltage down below. We have an open circuit, no question about it, between the engine computer and this transmission relay. Now we'll check it up here. I'll give you a voltage reading. Remember, it didn't light the test light. And so what I'll do is, I'll give you two readings. We'll do one with it unplugged and see what it looks like. Now we'll do the one plugged in first. So I'm gonna take my, take my lead off the transmission wire now. And I'm coming up to the relay, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my test light. Just kind of rig in my, my pin here with this relay plugged in. And it's gonna be a little bit of a tough shot. I need to make sure I'm having contact there. Key off, key on. Okay, I had like a 0.6 of a volt reading. Just confirming what we already knew is there's no voltage on that pin going to this relay. Now, let's get a reading with it unplugged. Just curious what this is gonna read. This will be an unloaded circuit. Again, I'm not putting my pin into the terminal. I'm putting it next to it. Get a reading on this unloaded. The relay is out of the picture. And we will cycle the key. <laughs> That's awesome. And uh, we have our good voltage signal there, guys. Check it out, I'll show you again. 11 volts, maybe slightly lower, like 11.3. Man, that's pretty close, but what's that tell you? Unloaded circuit voltage testing will get you in trouble almost every time. So guess what? Now we know why Chrysler told you to use the test light and look for a dim light. Reason they had you do it is because at the time, probably when the flow chart was written, they did not make the adapters to keep the relay plugged in and check it loaded. So what is the test light? The test light is your load in the circuit. Listen, you guys that think that a test light should not be used on a computer circuit, you really are mistaken. I mean, this test light, it really can be your best friend if you know how to use it. Unloaded circuit showed us good voltage there, guys. Plug the relay back in, load the circuit, no voltage, major voltage drop on that circuit. So it's not a completely open wire. I may have misspoken as far as saying the wire was open, but there is excessive resistance in that wire, no question about it. Huge voltage drop on that circuit, so much that it can't even energize a relay coil that only draws 100 milliamps. Pretty cool test. And what we need to do now is we need to find this wire. And of course, I'm working outside. I'm laying here in this garage parking lot. And uh, one of the things we do is visual inspections. And, and what I see, and I haven't pulled this apart yet, but what I see, so here's your harness. That'd be factory wrappings for the harness. And uh, then you see up here a little bit further that, that we have a harness that's been repaired and you know up in that this area that would be factory conduit and tape but then you look here you see a zip tie that's under the tape and it actually looks like a pretty decent repair job whoever was here in the past most likely repaired some wiring in here and, I, and i'm pretty sure that memory serves me that i've done repairs on these before too and uh anyway someone was here and i'm putting money that our problem is in here. 
And so what we'll have to do is take that apart and take a look. Now our transmission controller is up in this area. That's where we were in the in the wheel well area. I'm not sure if I'm even getting that on the camera. But the computer's there. It goes over this way, the harness, and then runs up along the transmission up in that way. So I'm going to take this apart right here and see what I find. All right, here's a shot after just cutting some of the tape away. And, you know, it just goes to show you no matter how much care you take and, and taping up harnesses, the tape, number one, isn't good enough. But, you know, it looks like whoever did this, you know, they used heat shrink. There, you can see a broken wire right there. That's not even the wire that we're attacking right here. This, that's a green wire. We're worried about a yellow wire, so we still have to find ours. But that's pretty good evidence. We got some green cruddies everywhere. And, and that was heat shrink. But the thing is, is that wasn't the heat shrink that has the sealant inside of it, which is really what you need to use. Uh, at least it doesn't look like it to me. So pretty nice repair. Um, you know, uh, I'm not knocking the person who did this. It's probably probably four or five years ago. It might be my guess that this was done. But um, you know, it just kind of goes to show you, tape isn't good enough. Heat shrink isn't good enough. Even, you know, soldering heat shrink isn't good enough unless you're sealing that. And so, real important that uh, you're using the good type of heat shrink when you're doing these kind of repairs. Let me find this wire. I'm not going to be able to film it. Uh, let, me, let me find it and I'll get you a shot of it. Okay, I found it. It is a yellow brown wire. I went back and checked the diagram just to make sure. Yellow brown, that was the wire we were up at, the computer testing. And uh, it was actually one that wasn't repaired in the past. There's all these other repairs that are in here. Some of them need to be redone. This one in particular, actually there's a yellow jumper someone used. It was actually a green wire. And uh, this was our relay control. And I can't tell on this two inch screen, but I'm pretty sure that you can see the green cruddies in that wire. That. Uh, yeah, actually just from using the razor blade and splitting this a little bit of pressure that just popped apart so that's where my problem was <laughs> look it's broken even further up in there that's a wire that's going to need some extension pieces put in i wouldn't be surprised if we have to replace like a foot of that wire just because once you get moisture in these you can't fix them you got to cut all the bad wire out so actually <laughs> This is where it's fortunate to uh, to be me, <laughs> that uh, I don't have to do the repair, that I just need to tell this garage what to do, and uh, you know this part isn't going to be fun. So I get to say, hey, fix that, and then I get paid for diagnosing it. How cool is that? So hopefully, hopefully you guys like that. Um, I'm not going to stick around for the end result. I think what I've shown is good enough, and we do a wiring repair and clear the codes on this, and everything's going to be great. So transmission limp home problem from a corroded wire from actually multiple corroded wires, but one main one that was causing the relay to not be turned on.